are several African-American trailblazers in the television and movie genre, and one man has remained active for over four decades in the entertainment industry. He's had high accolades in both film and television. Well, that man is Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, and he's my guest on Conversations. Jacobs has come a long way since the 70s hit movie Cooley High and his series Welcome Back Cotter. So when I asked him what is it that you use as a special technique to make all of your performances so believable, he told it to me straight. <laughs> I am so happy to be here with you today. Thank you so Thank much. You, if you could only be inside of my heart right now, you would know how excited I am in this your heart, is. Darling. You are. You're right. You're in mine. Right. Okay. Mm. There we go. That was quick. Yeah. You know, you had to work it. I gotta go way back, and then we're gonna come and talk about why you're here in St. Louis. You're age me immediately. Go ahead. That, immediately. Yeah. But, but me too, because yeah. I was there. Yeah, okay. But I want to say first and foremost, I want to thank you because I know you know this. Maybe you don't, but you have been such a trailblazer for. African Americans in the field of acting That's and theater cool, and movie because I don't know if you realize it or not, but when you were on Welcome Back Carter, and you all know that he was on Welcome Back Carter, he was Boom Boom Washington. I know I don't have to say that, but I'm going to tell you. And you were the only African American male teenager at that time in a sitcom. Did you realize Myself that? and Jimmy Walker. Jimmy That's was on, right. on Good Times. It good was Jimmy times. and I, and the other other person that was close to black was Freddie Prinze. That's <laughs> who's true. Puerto Rican. Close. Mm -hmm. We used to always close. talk about it back in that day. Back in the yeah. day. Mm -hmm. So that is, actually, even at this time, it's, it's hard to find. But you opened up the doors for us. Oh, cool. And then in, in, a, in a sitcom that actually had a lot of nationalities, because you had uh, Italian. Mm -hmm. Didn't you have? You had yeah, Puerto Rican Jew. Yeah, Puerto Rican. Yep. You know, Jewish. We were Irish. You know, we just mix it all up. And we were trying to really be um, the real diversity of what New York City was about, which is mm -hmm. a melting pot community. That's where I grew up. Exactly. Yeah. Now you went to you went to a New York City school. Oh yeah, high school. All, all my schools here yeah, in New York City. Yeah. And now you were nine children. One of nine. Is that correct? Um, nine. There's, there's nine people. There's uh, eight brothers and sisters. I'm the fifth. I'm the wow. ham of the sandwich, right in the middle. Right. <laughs> there's a bunch of us. Now here. I was going to ask you where did you get the name Hilton from, but I found out. Tell me if I'm correct that it's your dad's first name? My father's first name is Hilton, and I'm lucky because his middle name is Augustus, so man, okay. <laughs> I'd have had a lot of fights. <laughs> Yo, Gus, but, but um, no, that's, and, and you know, it's kind of funny, the name Lawrence came from a guy that, um, my family's West Indian and um, Santo Domingo, and so a lot of times whenever people would come up from the homeland, they would always stay with us. Mm -hmm. And this guy Lawrence came up as a, as a young guy, and he would like he became like a son to my mother, mm -hmm. and did a lot of errands and stuff like that. So she kind of just gave me his name. Isn't know? that something? Trippy, so yeah. Lawrence Hilton, and you're, I couldn't pronounce your mother's name. How do you pronounce her name? Clothilda. Clothilda. Wow, that's a mouthful. Or Clo. And yeah, where are they from? Where my mother they? is originally from Santo Domingo, okay. but then grew up in St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. And my father, Hilton Jacobs, is from St. Croix in the Virgin Islands. Isn't that something? Yeah, and my older, my two oldest brothers and my oldest sister, who are all in their fifties, they're all from St. Thomas. And when, now am I correct in, in what I've read in that when you finished high school, you did some odd jobs, and then you went to, is it Al Franz? Al Fan. Al Fan. The Al Fan Theatrical Ensemble. I studied with the Al Fan Theatrical Ensemble. I was at the Negro Ensemble Company. Mm -hmm. um, the Public Theater in New York, which was Joseph Papp, who did the New York Shakespeare Festivals. I was involved in that for a while. Taught acting for a while with um, a friend of mine, Adam Wade, who's a great singer and a wonderful actor. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in America's Most Wanted four times, but don't talk about that. <laughs> How did you get the whole Welcome, welcome Back Carter? I, I mean, it came know, after Cooley High, correct? No, it was before Cooley High. Really? No, no it was no. after You know what? It, it was after Cooley High, you're right. See, hey. I'm, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm still here. No, I, I had done Claudine, and right? then I did Cooley High, but before Cooley High came out, I got the Welcome Back Carter job. I, I auditioned. Okay. Okay. And then um, what happened is, uh, back in that day when the movie came out, it stayed on the street for a year and a half. Hmm. So Claudine was still playing. Cooley High came out in the summer of 75. And in the fall of 75, Welcome Back uh, Carter came out. So they were all out at the same yes. time. So it was just, you know, a, a lot of stuff going on there. Okay, I have to tell you that I remember when you were the centerfold in Right On Magazine, okay? <laughs> Peace to the motherland. I remember. I had the centerfold <laughs> in my I look room. at those pictures now. I'd be feeling sorry for me. I'm so skinny, man. I the ribs in my sorry. chest, man. <laughs> Doing the smile with I'm the right, shirt right, halfway right, unbuttoned. Right, crooked afro. But mm -hmm. what, um, mm -hmm. how did it affect you, or did it affect you, being, then you had Claudine, 
Cooley High and Walking Back. You were was, all over the place. It was weird. I mean, you know, you know, it's, it's when I had done Claudine the first time and it came out, people, you know, we see so many movies, we don't pinpoint, you know, like it's Cassandra or something like that. So, right. you know, they would think that either I went to school with them or owed them money or something, you know, <laughs> you know they couldn't put it together. But then it was all at the same time. It was almost like instantaneously. Because wow. um, Welcome Back, Carter came on the air on September 9th, 1975. Don't ask me why. I remember all dates on That's this great. Trivia, trivial nonsense. But anyway, <laughs> And I went back to New York to see the show with my family. Mm -hmm. And on the 10th, it's like when I went out the door, man, it was pandemonium. You know, it was you the weirdest feeling. Me. It was weird. And, and Cooley High was already released in, in New York, where I'm from, mm -hmm. living in you know, Los Angeles, went back. So I didn't know what was going on, other mm -hmm. than some friends had sent me some articles. So it was kind of strange that all of a sudden people just knew you. Mm -hmm. It was pointed or people get physical. They were like touching and mm -hmm. grabbing. I was mm -hmm. like, yo, I'm still in New York. What's <laughs> up, you know? And so um, it, it, was, it was overwhelming. It really was. Yeah. Well, I'm from Chicago. Okay. And Cooley High base, was based on a, is it fictitious, the story? Because I understood that it no, has no, some truth. No, no, it's a true story. I thought so. You know, I mean, Cooley High was on Division, as yes. you know, you know, which is long gone, you mm -hmm. know. And um, Eric Monty, who wrote it, you know, he was also the creator of Good Times and The Jeffersons. Mm -hmm. And he also wrote Fritz the Cat and just a bunch of movies. You know, yes. wonderful brother who's a writer. And it was his life story. Okay. When he grew up in the Cabrini Green projects and the whole number. Mm -hmm. Except the names had to be changed for legal reasons. Right. You know, he wasn't called Preacher in the movie, as Glenn was called. Mm -hmm. He was called Genghis, like Genghis Khan. Mm -hmm. And my character was, uh, no, I was Genghis Khan and he was Reverend. Oh, Reverend, then, okay. So the Cochise, which sounded better after a while, mm -hmm. and call him Preach, that was just a flip of things. And Cochise was really, let me get it now, Richard Morris. Richard Morris is the character. Now, you are into this. I'm, I'm, I'm good, Larry. I told you. Okay, here's Mr. Okay, check, okay? Here's you, a check here, okay? Can I get a, can I get a so, rebate? That's Richard <laughs> Morris, I remember. But, you know, because it was really, I don't know if you'll ever understand the impact because it was you oh, that yeah. it made for all of us watching. You know, to me, Cooley High is like an anthem for a lot of black people, you know? When we were doing Welcome at Cotter, he was out. So myself and Travolta decided, we used to hang out a lot. So we decided to go to the movies one afternoon because we got out of work early. We go, we're sitting in the back hiding out, you know, because we just want to watch the movie. And I look over and he was crying. Really? So he kind of took me out, you know? Yeah. When I saw some big buff guys, you know, trying to get all emotional. Mm -hmm. It's a touching, sweet, you know, honest story, you Absolutely, know? absolutely. So it's not a bad thing. Hey, y'all, D, hey, y'all, D. This year, when I get out of Cooley, it's going to be Grambling University. Y'all want to hear the ball? Come on, hear the ball. Come on, hear the ball. I'm not, as an actor, there to judge my character like an mm. outsider, you know, because whether my character is an evil person or a good person, I'm there to play their truth, mm -hmm. you know, and, and convey that message, and then hopefully the audience will get that. So. If you're playing a character that may have, uh, let's say, something sinister, you, you don't judge that person? That would no. be so difficult for me. No, but then that's, how can you do that? That's like judging yourself. You know, it's like looking in the mirror and saying, mm -hmm. you know, you know uh, hey, I'm Cassandra, you know, and, um, you know, because I didn't smile today means I'm a bad person. Mm -hmm. That's not true. You know, um, people who are truly evil don't think that they're evil. That's true. You know, or if you Good take point. a ball player, if a ball player is really playing his game and he's coming down and he's trying to do it, they, they go into a zone based on their abilities, mm -hmm. but then you take a confidence point of view and you just go with that instinct mm -hmm. and you let it happen. So that's not a, uh, and you know, everything's working for you, but you take the chance. Mm -hmm. That's why Michael Jordan is great. That's why Magic Johnson is great. Mm -hmm. That's why Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is great. Because it, they can take you there so in a moment, you know, Kobe, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Ryan, just unbelievable, mm -hmm. you know, people, you know. So to my approach uh, to um, as an actor, I try to go for that same feeling. Mm -hmm. I, I try to go for the essence of the truth mm -hmm. and understand that with not a lot of judgment because then I'm dictating what's supposed to happen. That's true. Now, of course, acting is deliberate. You know, if I want you to cry, I'm trying to make you cry. If I'm trying to scare you, I'm trying to make you scared. But I still have to have some kind of a, what I call a roller coaster of dynamics to getting to that point of emotion or that point of attack. Along with your picture, I had Michael Jackson next to you. Next to you, <laughs> not in front of. So when I found out about Jackson 5, American Dream coming out, I was glued to the set. And I've taped it and we've watched it a million times since then. And you were Joseph Jackson. I'm sure you've heard this. <laughs> you were Joseph Jackson, and oh, you know man. you were Joseph. You studied that part. I got into it. Yeah. You were that man. And not only were you the man, were Joseph Jackson, but each stage, you convinced me that you were Joseph Jackson. Now, obviously, you know, I mean, I that, that, was, that was one of those roles that when it, I mean, it was not an easy role to get. I mean, everybody in the grandmother auditioned for that role. I mean, <laughs> the grandmother, Larry. Hmm? The grandmother. The grandmother, uh -huh. she was there. Okay. Yeah, you know, she was there, man. She was like, yo. You know? But um, a lot of people came up. Everybody from Dorian Hayward to Eric LaSalle, you name it, went up. And everybody was kicking. Nobody was coming up, you know, light. So it was a hard choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, they decided to roll with me. And when I got the, um, 
the script, you know, which is the size of a phone book. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked at the multi layers and I said, wow, man, you're gonna have to really wake up here, dude. Hmm. You know, I really get into it. So I said, just be honest. You know, you know, respond to the material, be honest to it, mm -hmm. and you'll find it. So what I did is whenever I had a different age to play in the movie, mm -hmm. if I was 20 mm -hmm. or 38 or whatever the age was, I would always write a little note to myself pertaining to I love my kids. Mm. And a little note of why I love them. Mm -hmm. So no matter what the scene was about, it was, I'm doing it for them. In my way that they may not understand, but it, maybe one day they will. Did you feel that that's what he was really motivated I by? I knew that's what he would have to be. Mm. Did you get a chance to meet him? Oh yeah, I've known them for years. You know, I've known mm -hmm. the Jacksons for 30 years, you know, mm -hmm. and um, footnote, I dated Latoya. Uh-oh. You, know, <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Where'd she go? You know? But um, no, I've known the family for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And um, I even think Joe was a little nervous about me playing him, to be honest. Hmm. Because when I got the part finally, I tried to get in touch with him several times. And he wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> a scene that just kept coming to me, I remember the scene when she caught him talking on the phone, which was obviously you playing Joseph Jackson, talking on the phone to saying, did you get my the money order I sent you or whatever? She came in there and said, you lied to me. You take care of me. Let me tell you about that scene. Angela Bassett is real strong, okay? <laughs> real strong. Because, I mean, I was holding her back. Mm. I wasn't like, you know, trying. I was holding her back. She mm -hmm. was beating my butt. I mean, we did 14 takes. I'll never forget. Wow. In between takes, man, a couple times, I just had to walk off and just say, all right, man, we're doing a movie. Then go back, <laughs> man, because she was beating in the ribs. I mean, she scratched my chin. She, mm. she wore me out. I love you, Angela. I know. <laughs> she said, I don't want you no more. I don't want you. I it was, it was an inspired you. moment. It was. She went for it, yeah. And you know what? Uh, the, the way they kind of patched that up, she went away with her mom, and then she came back, and then you were there by yourself, being Joseph Jackson, talking about Janet being on good time. It just started to really remind us all the things, at least from my perspective, the Jacksons were doing. Here, Janet was on her movie set, you said, doing something. Michael was working on the album. The other kids were touring. They were growing up. Yes. They were all growing up. They all had individual lives. And with the reign that Joe had on him, he couldn't hold anymore. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of those kids got married, you know, and married young, was to be able to get out the house. Mm -hmm. 18 and 19, they just had to get out of there, you know? I mean, they loved their wives and all that, but mm -hmm. they needed to get away. And so, um, and Joseph, you know, he had created this dynasty, you know, that was about to be even bigger than he could even handle. Mm -hmm. So his purpose in the way it, he used to handle him was just not there anymore. Mm -hmm. But what was he going to do? Right. You know, and so it was just, so my feeling of it in playing him was to never, um, I didn't want to play him apologetically, okay. you know, like feeling sorry for himself. Sure. You know, he made a choice. He was um, very hardcore about it. You got to have arrogance with that. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's you know, trying to level themselves up or escalate themselves to any level in life, you got to have that behind you. Mm -hmm. But I never had him with an apology, you know. It was just like, okay, man, I don't like this. Oh, later, I'm a, I'm a deal. Mm -hmm. You know, which is how I feel in life. Absolutely. You know, honestly, I, 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 anything that I've ever done in my career, I have no shame in. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's, and I've done some films, you know, <laughs> that didn't work. But, um, you know, I it took on the jobs for different reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, I get into it, and I just try to come, come through. You know? One way that Lawrence Hilton Jacobs is trying to come through and deliver is by taking on the role of director, producer, and even composer. I've been a musician forever, you know. I've been playing piano and keyboards for like 34 years. Mm -hmm. I don't make a big deal about that part of my life, but I do it, you mm -hmm. know. And I'm a director and a writer, so whenever I do movies, a lot of times I'll get involved in the soundtracks. I'll either um, do the theme songs or sometimes the underscoring. You know, or, you know, I'll give it to some um, musician, you know, some composer that I like or think is right for the film. But, you know, musician, this is what's funny. Sometimes when you get down there with, um, you know, composers and they hear some directors coming and tell them what the <laughs> soundtrack should sound like, you know, they're just kind of listening. But they can't play me like that because I could play it. Uh -huh. You know, so I said, well, this is what I mean. <laughs> you know, they're, they're going, okay. What else is going to be going on for you so we can keep an eye out? Well, I direct, you know, and stuff like this. So I'm always setting up a movie. So I've been um, given a couple of films, you know, to Great. do. I'll tell you the names of them, but the deals are not dead yet. I okay. mean, made yet. But one is called Them Record Brothers Live. Okay. And it's uh, about two brothers who are um, mus musicians, but, you know, they're brothers in mm -hmm. blood. And as they grow older, they start to get their own personalities. They start drifting apart. Hmm. And it causes conflict in their families as well as their personal relationships. Mm. So it's an interesting concept. Mm -hmm. And a movie called Gangsters that I wrote, mm -hmm. which is a real wild concept. It's about five rappers who are going through the South on tour. And um, they get ambushed by the Aryan Nation people. They get taken into this compound that's electrically fenced in 100,000 feet. And they're sent out as prey to be hunted. Oh but goodness. the brothers flip the script on them OG style and come off. Isn't that something? It's wild. It's ridiculous. It's, I'm, Is that I'm, for a player or a movie? I don't even movie? do drugs, man, but I can't even <laughs> so, yeah. mm -hmm. so there you go. Did you say it's for a player or a movie? For a, for a movie. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, for so we'll just be looking out for that. Yeah, you know. 
So you've taken us for four, this is the fourth decade that you've entertained us. I've 70s, been around for a while, yeah. The 80s. I mean, this is great. I've, yeah. I've obviously been around as well. The mm. 70s, the 80s, the 90s. I never and thought now of it like that. Absolutely. I'm getting old. Four decades. Can you get my Geritol? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the and we have just, we've been enjoying everything that you're doing. We look forward to everything that you're doing. I take it as a blessing, you know, and, um, you know, there's a little luck in there, of course, but um, I'm a, a casual person about stardom, whatever mm -hmm. that's supposed to be. It's a gig, you know, and I do it, and I really love it. Mm -hmm. You know, I share it, you know, Openly, I'll talk to anybody. I don't trip on it. I really don't, you know. And um, I'm just very, very serious about it when I do the work. As silly as I am, as you obviously can see, you know. But um, I, get, I just get focused in, and, and it's therapeutic for me all the time. Absolutely. So it's, it's a great feeling. Well, it's a great feeling to be here with you today, and we are definitely going to support well, you for the you, rest Bob. of your career. Yeah. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs <laughs> on Conversations. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Getting a chance to interview Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, someone I've admired for a lifetime, was both exciting and enjoyable. But then again, the best interviews aren't really interviews, they're conversations. See you next time.